and welcome to another Stream Thursday. Today, we're going to be talking about the science of carnivals. And what that's going to be based on is Newton's three laws of motion. So let's go over those first. Newton's first law is that if an object, we'll use this ball, if an object is at rest or not moving, it will not move on its own. And if an object is already moving, it will not stop unless acted upon. So now I'm going to act upon it. And it, if there was no gravity, it would just keep going forever. Newton's second law of motion is that if an object is moving or not moving, to get it to move, you have to act on it with a force greater than gravity. So. My hand here, I'm going to push on it, and that force is shows <laughs> the second law of motion. Newton's third law of motion is that whenever an object is moving, if it is acted upon by a force, there is an equal and opposite force that comes from the collision of those two forces. So let me show you with this ball. So when I take the ball and I throw it to the ground, it's going to hit the ground. At the ground, there will be an equal and opposite reaction, and you'll see what that looks like. So let's watch. It bounces. Okay, so now we're gonna show our first experiment, and we have Mary here. She's gonna be our guinea pig to see how she does. So you guys remember we have the little bottle pyramid. We have to hit it with the ball and knock them all over. So our experiment today is gonna to be how much mass do you need to knock over all the balls? Does it work better with a lighter ball, which is this is a hollow plastic ball, or a tennis ball, which has more weight or mass. And so the more mass something has, the bigger the force it has. So Mary's going to step about six feet away, and we're all going to cross our fingers, and she's going to knock over the bottles. <laughs> she's going to knock over the <laughs> bottles. Yay! Okay, so she hit the bottle with that one. Let's see if she can knock over more with the heavier ball. You can see these have a really, where do you think she should aim to get it knocked over? Should she aim up here or down here or maybe somewhere right around in here? Let's see what happens. Aiming is not my best quality. <laughs> didn't work quite as well on those bottles. Let's see what our second one is going to do. So Mary will go back to about the same six feet and we have a different size bottle. Now, these bottles or jars are bigger, so they have more mass, right? They weigh more and their top surface area is a lot bigger. So they're more sturdy. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so, Mary. Game rigged. <laughs> Just like the carnival games. <laughs> She's gonna try with the lighter ball. That's <laughs> gonna hit me in the face. It's <laughs> gonna hit, it's gonna hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay, let's see what happens with a heavier ball. Even though it wasn't as good, the heavier ball did still work better than the others. <laughs> Let's try another carnival game. Okay, so now we're going to try another carnival game. We're going to do the basket toss. 
pretty much everybody has seen this one pretty easy. Mary's gonna be using the same balls that we did before, and she's gonna be standing at the same spot. So let's try it at this angle and see what happens. So Mary's gonna go back. She'll try the blue balls first, which are light plastic hollow balls. Easy. Somewhat easy. <laughs> Let's try the other balls. <laughs> We're already doing better than we did before. Pretty good. She did, what, like 50% better? Yeah, <laughs> much better than she did last time. So, let's try this, but when we go to a carnival game, the baskets aren't flat. How are the baskets? They tend to be tilted. Now, how do you, how do you think this changes our physics. Now we're not talking, we still have the same balls and the same basket, so we still have our, our same forces acting on each other, but now we've thrown some, th something else in there. We've thrown geometry, we have angles. Let's see what happens when we do that. So, Mary's gonna try the blue balls. Break the game. Break the game. Okay, so she cheated. <laughs> it's skill. Yes, but you guys see that as it was a lot harder this time for her to try and get the ball to stay in the basket. So try. Some baskets, try some different size baskets, some different size balls, and have lots of fun with the basket toss. So our last little experiment today is going to be a small demonstration of the ride that everybody knows as the Gravitron. It's the one where you stand inside and you hold on really tight and it starts spinning around and then the floor drops out and it starts lifting up and you're not falling. So let's see how that happens. There's two forces that act, that act upon you at that time, and I'm gonna show you with the bucket, which is gonna be like the Gravitron, and you as a tennis ball. So our bucket will start, and we're gonna start spinning it. So we have this. At this point, the bucket is being acted upon by centripetal force, which means it's being kept going outwards and the string is what's keeping it from flying around, away. So let's see what happens when we stop it and you get on the ride. So while you're on the ride, you're still being acted upon with centripetal force, but there's also centrifugal force, which is what keeps you pressed against the basket. The basket is acting upon you, which keeps you all inside and you're not falling out because then if you fell out, that's when everything stops and, uh-oh. That's why the rides always go slowly, back down to the end. We had lots of fun with carnival science and learning about Newton's three laws of motion and centripetal and centrifugal force. And if you wanna learn more about that, you can go onto the library's website, look at Hoopla. There's tons of streaming science books and there's science, um, science videos that you can watch. So that's a lot of fun. So experiment, have fun, and we'll see you next stream Thursday.